Beige, I guess, is, is a modern concept band. I mean, historically, crop over bands um, came out of celebrating, you know, the the end of of the slave season per se in, in slave days. So they would give the slaves a time to celebrate after the the crop was cut. And you know, when crop over came back in the, in the 70s, I believe, um, the early 70s, uh, that was the the entire festival was built around that concept. Right, so it was one, you know, a few weeks to celebrate after the cutting of the crop, right? Um, you would find that bands like Beige, I mean, we, we got into mass quite by accident. Um, we were a young promotional group, right? And Marcia Chandler, who was a, an established um, designer at the time, she wanted to get back into crop over. She was in crop over competing heavily with the, with the veterans of the day, the Gwen Squares and the Betty West and so on. And she wanted to get back into the mass, but she didn't want to deal with the business side of things and the promotions and the fets and all of that. At that time, you know, we were kids just fresh out of school, still in school actually. And, um, you know, we had a little promotional company going on, Beige International, right? So she approached us, you know, how would we like to basically become the, the marketing arm to, to allow her to come back into the festival, you know? Um, so we jumped on board, you know, a young and bright tight and bushy tail jumped on board. And then two years later, Marcy decided, well, I doubt that. <laughs> it's stressful for me, right? However, at that point in time, we had, you know what I mean, a group of, you know, 700 to 1,000 people now following Beige, right? So we were like, all right, I mean, it's big enough now, it's, it's a culture thing now, so we can't just let it go. So we've got to kind of be brave and learn this mass thing from scratch, you know? And so said, so done, you know? So we probably, t I think from 2001, we started in 99. In 2001, we were taking the reins, you know, officially. Um, these, as I say, these kids without a, a clue right, about crop over or culture or anything. And, you know, 11 years later, we're going on to our 14th band, right? And, and successfully, um, I, I would think that one of our major successes is that because we were non traditional, and because we weren't, you know, trained the traditional form of, of crop over, right? Where you had to represent you know, the steel donkey or flying fish or grass skirts. We kind of said, look, we're going to listen to what our young market wants on the road and we're going to depict that in our mass. Not only in our theme, but in our costumes and we're going to get our materials from, you know, the, the place we get the... Whoever gives us the best variety of materials at the best price, you know, we're young business people and we're going to change the model, right? So we're going to make this thing modern, we're going to make it cool, we're going to reflect what 18 and 19 and 20 year olds want versus what you know historically we're supposed to do and we're going to create this new vibe and that's that's how the band the modern beige international was created yeah um and it's been a great success what's involved in making a band um first thing is to come up with a concept and a theme again that we think is going to excite our market which still predominantly is you know our primary market is still at 18 to 25 26 year old female secondary guys 26 to 35 right so we want to find out what's going to excite that young entry level masquerader uh, we come with a theme that we think is current and then we come with ideas that we can then communicate into, into our costumes we do a lot of looking at of masks all over the world not just in Barbados you know I mean in Barbados I guess we're seen as being one of the one of the leaders in terms of, of young, young bands right and modern masks but we try to look outside of them Look at what's going on, look at the materials, look at the trends, look at Trinidad, look at Brazil, look at wherever's popping, Vegas, whatever. And we try to create a unique mask by using the trends, right? So after we do our theme, we then go to our designer, uh, and then we challenge our designer with creating, taking our ideas of our theme, and creating a band that reflects the, the ideas. Um, once we have a basic idea of our, of our designs, we then go to producers all around the world. All right, China, New York, all over the world, um, to source the best materials and then get people to make the best possible band for us. So at the end of the day, it's, it's, a, it's a very big business um, operation where we do a lot of coordination across the globe, beginning with our ideas, beginning with the costumes, beginning with sourcing the materials, and then ending with everything hopefully coming together right, in a nice package for the road, right, um, to present it.
or how do you present it differently to anybody else? That's always a challenge, you know. So we want to find exciting, cutting edge entertainment ways to present our band, you know. So you know, we were the first guys to start really doing like the whole catwalk concept and doing different theatrics and so on in our presentation to try and, and wow not just Barbadians but to try and wow people you know on the world wide web who are locked on to say wow these Barbadians got something going on you know what I mean um, so the second stage is once you have your costume is trying to create a launch that really captures the imagination of the young people and it's like a one hit wonder you got one chance to launch property so we put a lot of time a lot of effort into our photo shoot into, into just connecting with the, the, the best venue all try to be unique and different and it's trying to put on a show man when you leave that night it's like I want to be in that band you know um, and if you can achieve that I mean we've, we've been blessed that we have achieved that for the last few years um, then the next stage is just to facilitate you know the mass influx of people who want to sign up you want to make sure their experience their sign up experience is you know as pleasant as possible you want to try and get as many previous band members back into the band you know what I mean because they're like family but you still want to be able to expand your brand globally you know so there's always that challenge of customer service the whole distribution original signing up process that is another undertaking in itself you know I mean mass camp how we produce how we actually facilitate you coming in and getting back out as fast as possible and hopefully getting the costume that you that you want yeah um, and then we go on to the face <laughs> so once you pass that is that you take a deep breath <laughs> and then it's you know onto your face which is mass media Radio advertising, getting the right DJs, connecting with the artists, signing contracts, getting venues, you know what I'm saying, and just getting everything in time just to get that first fit off the ground, which goes hand in hand with a young band, you know what I mean? Um, and by the time you finish your fit season, you know, you're right on the nose of, of the distribution. And distribution is a massive undertaking where you now have to package your costumes, make sure all the sponsors, products are in the costume bags, make sure that what the customers have paid for they get. If there are any problems, any issues, address them immediately, you know, and um and just basically trying to facilitate the best you can for fifteen hundred people. And women are very specific, they're extremely passionate about their costumes, yeah. So it may seem easy, but um it's literally a six month undertaking with you know, seven month undertaking with no time for rest. What we do have as beige is that we very early realize that we can't all be doing the same thing, right? So I took on the I took on the role as marketing manager and band leader, right? So I primarily do all of the communication for the band, the entertainment, um, you know, all, all the, the creative end of things. But then I have a general manager, Val Bridgman, who is amazing at what he does, and he is responsible for sourcing all the materials. You know, for getting the the band, the costumes itself in place, right, and looking the way that that they do, and connecting to the right people, the right suppliers, you know, and then running the mass camp, which is a massive undertaking, and then doing all the rest of the general management things affiliated with the band and venues and so on. Um, then there's also my accountant, our financial director, should I say, Corey Knight, and he has the ridiculous <laughs> role of managing the sponsorship funds, making sure that every cent is spent properly and making sure that the band itself survives until Kadoom Day. And then we also have a hospitality manager who is Jason Cozier. And his sole purpose is just to make sure that the customers are fed, right? That they're drinking, they're eating, they're having a ball, the drinks don't run out and that everybody is having a time. We all overlap, but we all know exactly what our core responsibilities are. And I think that's one of the key things, that, that partnership and then supported by just a wealth of people, man. You know what I mean? Like, not just like, not just immediate people that work in the mass camera with us or the beige girls, but you know who are very, very help helpful, big thing. I mean, just like friends and family and revelers and our beige supporters. I mean, people give us so much ideas and so much help and so much support is, is incredible. You know, I think that's one of the most rewarding things about being in a band is just having that that sense of that you're a, a very real part of culture, a real part of your people, a real part of your development as a people, you know what I mean? And that the people give back so much love at any day, you know, for, for all that work, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a blessing.